In this video, we're going to focus on simplifying algebraic fractions. So let's go ahead and begin. Let's start with the fraction 12 divided by 15. How can we simplify this fraction? What you want to do is you want to break up 12 and 15 into smaller numbers. 12 is 4 times 3. 15 is 5 times 3. Notice that we can cancel a 3. So therefore, 12 over 15 can be reduced to 4 divided by 5. Now, based on that example, go ahead and try this one. Reduce the fraction 12 over 28 and also 54 divided by 30. Feel free to take a minute and work on these two examples. So what numbers can we break 12 into? Just like the last example, we can write it as 4 times 3. Now what about 28? 28 is 4 times 7. So notice that we can cancel a 4 in this example. So 12 over 28 can be reduced to 3 over 7. So that's a quick and simple way to reduce fractions. Try the next example. 54 and 30, what numbers can we break it down into? 54 is 9 times 6. 30 is 5 times 6. So in this example, we can cancel a 6. And so we're left with 9 over 5. And that's the answer for the second example. Go ahead and try this one. 120 divided by 96. So now we have some larger numbers to deal with. So what can we break down 120 into? 120 is 12 times 10. Now what about 96? Well, we know 96 is an even number, so we can write it as 2 times 48. Now 12, we could break that down into smaller numbers, 4 times 3. And 10 is 5 times 2. 48 is 12 times 4. So at this point, we could cancel a 4, and we could cancel a 2. So on top, we have 3 times 5. 12, we could break that into 3 times 4. So we can go ahead and cancel a 3. So therefore, the final answer in this example is 5 divided by 4. So that's how you could simplify 120 over 96. Let's try another example with a very large number. 840 divided by uh, 10,000, I mean 1,050. So take a minute and try that one. So 840, we can write it as 84 times 10. 1,050 is basically 105 times 10. So we can get rid of the 10. Now, 84, what numbers go into 84? Well, we know it's an even number, so we could divide it by 2. 84 divided by 2 is 42, so we can write it as 2 times 42. 105 is divisible by 5 since it ends in 5. So this is 5 over 21. Now 42 is 7 times 6. 21 is 7 times 3. So at this point, we can get rid of a 7. And 6 is 3 times 2. So now we can get rid of a 3. So the final answer for this example is 4 divided by 5. Now let's try an example that has variables. x to the fourth divided by x. So how can we simplify this algebraic fraction? Well, what we could do is factor x to the fourth. x to the fourth is basically four x variables multiplied to each other. Now what we can do is cancel one of the x variables on the top and on the bottom. So notice that we have three x variables left over on top. Therefore, this is x cubed over 1, or simply x cubed. So that's the answer for this example. Here's another one that we can work on. y squared divided by y to the fifth. What do you think the answer is for this problem based on the last example that you saw? y squared is y times y, and y to the fifth power 
is basically five y variables multiply to each other. So we can cancel two of them on each side of the fraction. So now we have none on top, so we're just going to write one. Y divided by Y is one. And on the bottom, there are three Y variables left over. So it's going to be Y cubed on the bottom. So this is the answer, one divided by Y cubed. Here's another example. 9x squared divided by 15x to the fifth. Go ahead and try that one. 9, we can write it as 3 times 3. x squared is x times x. 15 is 5 times 3. And x to the fifth power is 5x variables multiplied to each other. So we could cancel a 3 in this example. And we can cancel two of the x variables on top and on the bottom of the fraction. So all we have on the top of the fraction is a 3. On the bottom, we have a 5, and we have three x variables. So the answer is 3 divided by 5x cubed. Let's try this one. 21 x squared y cubed divided by 35 x y to the 6. So what do you think we need to do? 21 and 35 both contain a 7. 21 is 3 times 7 and 35 is 5 times 7. x squared is x times x. y cubed is just y times y times y. And then we have an x on the bottom and y to the 6 on the bottom as well. So we can cancel a 7, an x, and we can cancel three y variables. So on the numerator, we're left with 3x. And on the bottom, we have a 5 and just three y variables. So the answer is 3x over 5y cubed. For the sake of practice, let's try one more. 60 x cubed y to the seventh divided by 48 x to the fifth y to the fourth. 60 is basically 5 times 12. And then we have x cubed and y to the seventh. So I've got to write seven y variables and I'm almost out of space. 48 is 4 times 12. And then we have x to the fifth and y to the fourth. So we can cancel a 12, and we can cancel three x variables on both sides, and we can get rid of four y variables. So on a numerator, we're left with three y variables, so that's going to be y cubed, and we still have a 5 on top, so 5 y cubed. There's a 4 on the bottom and just two x variables, so four x squared. So five y cubed divided by four x squared is the final answer. Now I wanna show you one of my algebra courses that might be useful to you if you ever need it. So go to udemy.com. Now in the search box, just type in algebra and it should come up. So it's the one with the image with the black background. So if you select that option, and if you decide to go to course content, you can see what's in uh, this particular course. So the first section, basic arithmetic, for those of you who want to focus on addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, and it has a, a video quiz at the end. It's a multiple choice video quiz. You can pause it, work on the problems, and see the solutions. It covers long division, multiplying two large numbers, and things like that. The next tutorial is on fractions. Add in, subtracting fractions, multiplying, dividing fractions, converting fractions into decimals, and so forth. So you can also take a look at that. Next, solve the linear equations, which we covered. And just more examples if you need more help with that.
The next topic, order of operations, which is also useful. Uh, graph and linear equations. You need to know how to calculate the slope. You need to be familiar with the slope intercept form, standard form, and just how to tell if lines are parallel, perpendicular, and so forth. And there's a quiz that uh, goes with that as well. The next topic is on inequalities and absolute value expressions, which are also uh, seen in a typical algebra course. And then we have polynomials, and that's a, a long section. And then factoring, you just that's another topic you need to master. And then system of equations. You can solve it by elimination, substitution. There's also word problems as well. Sometimes you got to solve equations with three variables, x, y, and z. So that could be helpful. Next, quadratic equations, how to use the quadratic formula, how to graph them, how to convert between standard and vertex form. And then you have rational expressions and radical expressions, solving radical equations, simplifying it, things like that. And every section has a quiz. So you can always review what you've learned if you have a test the next day. So here we have complex imaginary numbers. You need to know how to simplify those exponential functions logs I have a lot of videos on logs and then just, this is just functions in general a vertical line tests horizontal line tests how to tell for functions even or odd and then conic sections graphing circles hyperbolas ellipses parabolas and things like that there's two video quizzes because it's actually a long section and finally arithmetic and geometric sequences and series so that's my algebra course if you want to take a look at it and uh, let me know what you think.